Good afternoon everyone, Country Flyboy here, and today we're finally going to start making edits in Airport Design Editor. So we've taught the anatomy of an airport and I've shown you how to do the prep work. Let's start doing the, the actual scenery remodel. Now things actually move pretty quickly. First, I'm, first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to place that closed runway in the right spot. So first, I'm going to see how long it needs. Since we've aligned the satellite image correctly, we can use the built-in measurement tool. We see we need it to be about 5,067 feet. Let's make it an even 5,070. 5,070. 150 foot width is fine. Now we just need to grab it and rotate it right there. Place it. There we go. So it's placed in there just like it should be. All right. Now, the next thing we need to do is start adding our taxiways. Now, we start with the runways, however. Remember I said we need the runway designated link here? What I like to do is I place these first, and I start with one runway on one end, and I put a node right there right on that line then I select the node and using the arrow keys I scroll all the way holding down the left mouse button to draw the line all the way to the other end and place it right there right at the bottom of that first line then slide back and make the adjustments because I know this one was off then I move it back you want these to be right on the center line all the, we'll move it right, right about there then we'll go to the other end, do the same thing. We'll move it all the way to the back, back here, right at the threshold. Now we'll do the same thing with the other runway, except we got one extra thing that we need to do. We need to connect it to the other node. So we'll go all the way up till we get to the first one that we drew, then connect it there, and then do the same thing. Go all the way up. Just plop it down right there. Note it is on the center line. That is where we want it. Now I'm not going to worry about this one here since this is the closed runway. No need to worry about that. Now, now we can start placing our taxiways. This is an uncontrolled airfield, so you don't need to worry about taxi designations like Taxiway Alpha, Taxiway Bravo. But the way you would do that is you go to List. You go to Taxi Designators, and you would click Add, and you would add the taxi designators you want. Alpha, Bravo, and you can actually spell out different names. You can say Dixie, or Apron, but be aware that Flight Simulator, and you can see the list sorts it alphabetically, Flight Simulator is not going to say Apron or Dixie. It's going to spell it out with the phonetic alphabet. So it'll say Alpha Papa Romeo Oscar November, Delta India X-Ray India Echo. It'll say that. So I don't recommend doing that. Just use your standard Alpha Bravo 1-2 designations. Next, we're going to draw a taxiway link all the way up to here. We'll stick along our satellite image for referencing. Now do note I do have the satellite image off a little bit. That is on purpose. I want to be able to see where taxiways are. So I've drawn here. Now we're going to take our measurement tool and we're going to measure the about how long wide this taxiway is. You can see it's 35 feet there. Oops, sorry. Hiccups all of a sudden. So we can see this is most likely a 35 foot taxiway. Now, it most likely does not have edge lines or center line lights, but we will give it both a center line and edge line or edge lights. These will draw the blue lights either side of the taxiway. Next, we're going to go all the way over here. Connect it to right about there. We can see the taxiway is wider here. There's a different taxiway. So this is most likely a newer taxiway. Also, real quick, let me move this. This uh, No, this is concrete. All right. So the taxiway is concrete. Looks like these are asphalt, though. Now, note there is an arc. 
right there. It's not a straight 90 degree turn. The way we can draw an arc is if we note we want the arc to start here and here. And we can just sort of, actually, I need to move that down a bit, do that. And that will draw us a nice little arc. So some some elbow bends going on there. You can add more um, nodes if you want to make it turn a little bit smoother like that. But I wouldn't put more than four nodes to make one arc. There we go. Now we got this thing here. I'm going to draw this all the way over until it intersects with that runway there. Right there. Now we're going to widen this to, that's probably about 45 feet. Let's see, measurement tool. Oh, it's 50 feet. Okay, so we'll make this 50 feet with the edge lines, or with the edge lights. Alrighty, so 50 feet, and we'll put you down right there. Now there's another taxiway, also 50 feet wide, extending down to here. We'll draw that. And it's taken the properties of the smaller one, so let's change it so that it is 50 feet. Edge lights and center line. There we go. We'll move it over a bit. There we go. You can grab whole lines and move them. You can also grab the nodes and move them. Either one works. Now you can see we have a taxiway going up to this um to this what's most likely a T hanger up here. So let and it's asphalt, it's a different surface. So let's draw that. It's gonna be drawn as concrete initially, but we'll change it. Uh fifty let's see, thirty five foot length will work or width will work. We'll change it to asphalt and we'll have it draw the lights. There we go. We got that going for us. Now, I'd like to draw my taxiways paralleling the runway and then draw the ones that connect to it. So let's start from here and go all the way over here and then down. Don't worry about being too precise. We can always fine tune later. So I'm going to move you over here, move you there. And there was an arc, not a straight 90 degree turn. So boom. Boom, boom, put you here and here, there we go. Nice, smooth turn. Then we will draw the the um the legs coming off to the runway. Oh, it actually looks like a 35 foot taxiway there. Yep. So, and these are all concrete. See, we got it selected as concrete, and it shows up as concrete in ADE. It'll show up as concrete in Flight Sim. This one here looks like asphalt. Looks like it intersects with that node right there, which is neat. And we'll just draw right here. Now, you may be concerned that, wait, that doesn't line up with the satellite image. Yes, but it's more efficient to have it just connect to both of those. I'm going to make it a little wider. Let's make that 45 feet, and it is asphalt. And no centerline lights, no edge lines. No, it doesn't line up exactly, but that's fine. You will drive yourself crazy trying to get things to line up exactly how they are on the satellite image. Don't bother. Make it so that it looks okay and works. Your, your main concern was making sure that it works more than it looks good. That's the primary thing. It has to work before it looks good. So I'm just going to draw an edge all the way up here. We'll add a node. There. We'll put you there. And we'll draw another one leading over to here. Don't worry about getting it right the first time. Remember, you can always come back and fine tune. Now, here we have it going to a T hanger. It most likely does not have lights on both sides here. So we're going to select this one so that only its left edge has lights and on this one we want only the right edge to have lights and if you're ever confused and want to make sure one side has lights and the other one don't don't let's show you this neat feature if you go to view select night lighting 
And then you can see how FSX is going to draw the lights. They're going to be drawn roughly like this. So you can see there's going to be no lights drawn along here, only on the sides. And that's exactly what we want because there's a hanger here. There's no sense in having lights there because there's going to be a hanger here. Okay, we got another taxiway that's concrete extending up over to here. Again, don't worry about having it be exactly right. Not only can we come back and fine-tune later, you will drive yourself bonkers trying to get it to look exactly like the satellite image. You're almost never going to get it looking correct. So just get it so that it looks... You're just never going to match the satellite image, so just get it so that it looks correct, and that's your main concern. Move you over just a hair. Here we go. Now, as for this, we can all draw with the apron tool. Looks like we do have a taxiway going here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw from here over to there. And we'll just fine-tune you a bit. No one's going to be using this particular taxiway because it's a closed runway, and it's most likely not safe to taxi on. I'm going to make this 150 feet wide, though. With no lights. That way it'll draw that nice little arc there. Just like that. I'm also going to put no lights on this because it's not a designated taxiway. No one's going to be making use of that. I don't think. We probably, we can designate that as a taxiway if we want. If we hooked it up to this and extended it down, we could make use of this closed runway as a taxiway. But if we look at the satellite image, well, it does have a center line. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's make this closed runway a usable usable as a taxiway, because it looks like it does have that. So what we'll do is we'll delete that, and we'll just slide it right on down here. Try to keep it, in fact, let's do this. Let's temporarily draw a center line on here so that we know exactly where the center of the runway is. And we will connect it with a taxiway link that is as wide as the runway. 150 feet. I'm not going to worry about lights, though. And you can see it's drawing the smooth edges for us here where the two connect. There. There. And why not? We'll go all the way down here, even though I'm pretty sure we're going to make this a closed taxiway down here. There. Now, if you don't want it to draw the center line, then you would need to select that in the um, taxiway properties. I'm going to have it draw the center line, though. This needs to be 150 feet. Turn off your lights. There we go. Same down here. Now, you may notice that this main runway here, the satellite image has it wider. And if you remember in the first video, I changed it from 150 foot width to 100 to match the AFD. This is most likely an older runway surface here. It used to be this wide. Now it's this wide. So that edge pavement thing that we marked on here is not going to draw edge pavement that far to the side. That's, a, that's what's called a runway shoulder. And if we want to get that effect, what we can do is draw an apron there. I usually like to use tarmac for runway shoulders. It looks better. So let's draw an apron, and we'll put a node here, one here. And go to the other end. We'll put a node, we'll say here and here. Now, that's going to draw that shoulder. There is a particular order FSX draws things in. And I can show you it... Well, I can show you it right here. If we had a ramp here, taxiways go over ramps. So the way it works is we got... Let's, let's slide over here. We have land class, which tr controls the under, underlying texture. Let's say, yeah, airfield 1. We put a, if we put an apron on top of that, 
Oops, that's the wrong thing. If we put an apron on top of that, as you can see, apron overwrites land class. Taxiways overwrite aprons. And runways will overwrite taxiways. Oh, runways overwrite everything. Runways overwrite absolutely everything. So the runway texture always appears on top. So that's a particular draw order you need to know. So this apron is going to appear on the bottom. Taxiways and runways will override it. All righty. So we've placed that shoulder, and we've placed the main taxiways. Let's go ahead and place this little lower end taxiway. I'm going to use the closed taxiway marking because I'm pretty sure this taxiway is closed. It's not open. I'm, I doubt airplanes are making use of it. So let's make it 50 feet wide. We'll give it a center line, but nothing else. Now, remember I said planes will still make use of closed taxiways. You know what? It's probably a usable taxiway, at least up to there. So let's actually make that a regular taxi path. Because I'm, it looks like it's usable up to this runway at the very least. But I don't see any reason why another airplane would be using it past this runway. So now we'll make it a closed taxiway. Now, FSX will still have AI and user planes making use of closed taxiways. I'll show you how you can stop that real quick. So first I'm going to actually draw all of this so that it appears as a regular taxiway that FSX will make use of. All right, I have drawn this taxiway as a closed taxiway. Um, but remember, FSX is still going to make use of it as if it was a regular taxiway because it, it, they just never finished designating that, no, you don't use this. So if I wanted to close it, I need to disconnect it from the network in a way. And how I can do that is I can break the connection. What you can do is if you select the Close Taxiway tool and click on three parts of the node, boom, boom, and boom. Actually, you could just do it too. We'll do it here. Boom, boom. And yeah, we're going to disconnect it from the network. I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to delete that. Now, what I have done is I have designated, I've separated these as two separate taxiways. What we're going to do is we're going to move the nodes right. We're going to zoom right in, and we're going to move these nodes right on top of each other. So as far as the user can tell, these are two can these are one taxiway right here. But as far as FSX is concerned, it's two separate ones that are not connected. And since it's not connected to the rest of the network, no planes will make use of it. Ne neither user nor, nor AI plane will make use of it now because it's been disconnected from the rest of the network. So there, we have disconnected it. It is now officially closed. Nobody's going to be using it. We'll keep this one open because it connects to this actual working runway here. All right, so we are done with the taxiways, except we're not. There's a few more markings we need to be putting down. Uh, one of them, where's the glide slope antenna? It's over here. One of them is the hold short markings. Now, now when you come up to a runway, you always have a hold short mark and tell you don't go past this line without takeoff clearance. And we have FSX draw that by adding a hold short node. And I like to put it right there. As you can see it has this circle around it. That is the designated distance. It has, it has, this marking has to be touching the runway somewhere in that circle. You can move it as far back as over here, but as long as at least a little bit of the runway is in that circle, it will work. If it's too far back, it won't work, and you'll have AI planes that just get stuck behind that, never receiving takeoff clearance. Eventually, FSX will delete them. 
That right there is about the standard distance for a hold short marking, which is about 179 feet from the edge of the runway. It's actually supposed to be about 200 feet from the edge of the runway, I think's the standard. So if we draw a 200 foot line right there. So yeah, we'll have a 200 foot distance there. Now if we now one thing we can do if we want all the hold short markings in the same place is if we draw a line extending the length of the runway and we do it correctly by actually putting it on a runway line so that we know it's straight. All the way to this end. If we delete this first one that I screwed up and then move this one so it goes right over that, we can see that we need right where we need to put the other hold short markings. So let's do it. Let's put one here. Let's put one here. Let's put one. That's a runway. We don't really need one there unless there's a lasso involved. Let's put one here and here and here. Now, the way hold short lines are oriented is solid lines is the line you cannot cross without a clearance, but dashed lines you can cross without a clearance. So you want the dashed side facing the runway. Um, as you can see here, it's opposite. We got the solid lines facing the runway. The reason is the direction of flow on this taxiway. Taxiways are bi-directional, but they do have an arrow on them showing which way you drew them. And that's how everything's going to be oriented. So if we want this to flip around, we'll double click that node to go its properties and change its orientation to reversed. And there, you see it flipped it around. There was another one over here we need to do that too. Now while I'm here, I'm also going to show you the other types of nodes you can have. Normal, which is that normal taxiway node like this one right here. Hold short, which is what we have. We have an ILS hold short, which I'll get into in a little bit. We have a hold short no draw and an ILS hold short no draw. Now what the no draw ones are for will designate that as a hold short point, but it will not draw the hold short line. That's useful if you're going to be using the custom GP objects, which we'll get into in a later video. We just need to reverse this real quick. There we go. Now what was that other one, the ILS hold short? I'm going to put an object here real quick. Library object. We're going to add the um, ILS glide slope antenna, which is this object right there. Let's put one right here. Now, let's pretend there was an ILS glide slope. In fact, we could actually add one because you navades. Does it not have a glide slope? It's a localizer. Let's give it a glide slope temporarily. All right. So, yeah, as you know from instrument training, there are two parts to an ILS, a glide slope and a localizer. This is the glide slope. So the glide slope is normally placed a beam the threshold about a few hundred feet off side of the runway. So I want let's say the local the glide slope antenna was right here with the glide slope beam right there. So that's a radio beam that extends out this way. Now, these things are prone to interference from ground aircraft and vehicles. I'm going to draw a line out on that leg of this little triangle. We're going to make it 2,000 feet long. And I'm going to draw another one extending from the same point on the other leg of the triangle. We're going to make it 2,000 feet long. Oops, not 20. So now we have a little cone. Any aircraft or surface vehicle in that cone will possibly interfere with the glide slope radio beam and a plane landing on this runway, that's bad. So there exists a thing called the ILS critical area designated by this mark. Now we have effectively drawn the ILS critical area with this cone that we drew here. This mark designates a whole short point where when the weather is below a certain minimums, which is like, it's a little bit better, like 700 feet and one mile visibility, I think. 
or if ATC tells you to, you hold short of this line. You cannot cross that until ATC tells you to if they told you to hold short or if the weathers are below a certain minima, you can't cross that line without clearance. And that designates if you cross past this line, you are interfering with the glide slope radio beam. And if an airplane on final is using it, that's a bad day for them. Um, but this runway, at least by default, does not have a glide slope, so let's get rid of that. We can get rid of this object, get rid of these lines. And we can also get rid of those nodes, and I'll just redraw that taxiway. It's easier. Alrighty, so it was 35 foot concrete here. 35 feet concrete, and it was a 50 foot concrete here. So that covers taxiways. Um, one last thing before I close out the video, we'll go ahead and add some parking spots. So I do my parking spots a certain way. I only put parking spots at terminals, docks, military ramps, and FBOs. Obviously, this is the FBO right here. We don't even have to look. But if we were doing an airport that had multiple FBOs or multiple ramps, and we weren't sure where the FBO is, we'd want to do a little research to figure out which one the FBO is on. This is a small airport. Now, I only put parking spots at the FBOs because AI airplanes and FSX are transient. They always go from one airport to another. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to put parking spots, small ones, here. And I'm just going to I'm going to draw a little reference line along here so I know I can make it straight. We'll move it. And we'll just put parking spots along this line. We'll put about four or five of them. We'll put four because there's more right here. So let's draw another one. And we'll use this as our reference here. Extend along there. We'll put a spot there. Oops. We'll turn it so that it faces this way. We'll move our line right on top of it. Copy, and we'll just put three right here. That's what it seems to have. So now we got three small parking spots at the FBO. Now, as for airplanes that are local, I don't put parking spots around hangars. Uh, sometimes I do. It depends. But usually I only put parking spots around the FBOs. Um, and I put static airplanes around the hangars. We're going to add another parking spot. We're going to put a medium parking spot because this airport is big enough for medium GA planes like King Airs and smaller jets to make use of. So let's put a medium parking spot here. And we'll put it right there. And since planes that make use of the medium spot are going to be like the King Air or the Learjet or something along those lines, They'll come up to this spot and taxi and park here, and it'll look like they just pulled up to the FBO like they do in real life. And they just offloaded whoever they were carrying or whatever they were carrying, and then they pull out and leave. Now we can see, looks like there's a fueling station here. There's two fuel tanks. Looks like it's actually the fuel stations here, and those are just storage tanks. So we will add a fuel spot here. Now by default, the fuel spots are humongous. You can see they have a 52-foot radius. We don't want them to be that big. This is a 32-foot spot, those small ones are. So let's change its radius to, we'll say 40. Much, much smaller and easier to work with. We'll face it this way. Put it right there. All right, so we have our parking spots placed at the FBO. We could place more. There looks like there's room for some here, but we'll only place these because you want to have room for planes to taxi around these spots. Now, in the, a future video, actually, I'll connect them off camera. I'll show you how to do it with this medium parking spot, real, or these smaller ones here. These need to be connected to the taxiway network somehow. And the way you do them is just like that. Draw it from the parking spot, to there. Make sure it has a line if you don't want it to draw a line. Let's make sure this line's width is also the same width as the parking spot. It's useful to have those two match. 
All right, so I'll do that with these four, and then we'll close the video out. All right, so they're connected. One other thing you may want it to do, and we'll go over later, but I'll go ahead and change these, is you may want to make sure that you don't draw lines on, or don't draw taxiway lights where an apron's going to be. I've already done that one. What I mean by that is, if I switch over to night lighting, you can see it's drawing lights right here, but we know there's an apron there. And you, Unless you're using in-pavement edge lighting, um, which is expensive, and most airports may not even bother with that, especially these smaller backwoods airports like this. So we'll want to get rid of that. What we'll do is we'll put a node here and another one here. And we'll actually just draw a taxiway here because that just goes up like that. And we'll turn this taxiway's edge lights off. It will draw edge lights on these arcs connecting them, but it will stop right here. Now, here, we're going to turn off the right side edge lights because it's right orientations facing this way. That's the right side of the taxiway right there. And same here. So we'll turn off right side lights. Right side lights. Right side lights. And as you might imagine, it's useful to do this before you actually connect these parking spots. Because you could, you saw this was just from here to here, just one big taxi away. I could have just double clicked it before connecting these, and I wouldn't have had to go back and do all that individually. Now, if we go to night lighting, we can see it's not drawing lights right here for some reason. It will, it should draw them in the simulator still. But you can see it is not drawing lights right here where the ramp is. We don't want it to. And that's exactly what we want to see. All right, so that covers the basics of the taxiway network. Hope you enjoyed it, and we will see you next time.